Um, Adam will be right here. Um, he's in a meeting right now, but we can get started, Doug. Uh, just this is just a workshop to uh, see what's going on with our cadet in Michigan. And Doug, you want to introduce? Yeah, sure. Or? Um, uh, well, for those of you that don't know, uh, we went after a grant from the EDA, uh, a non-construction grant that allowed us to um, come in and map the county in great detail for all the broadband infrastructure and wireless infrastructure and things of that nature. Um, we put that out to bid. Connected Nation here, uh, Chip Span, senior engineer, and Donovan. What's your title? Uh, technical Projects Coordinator. Uh, they both have those same last name, <laughs> Span. And uh, they've been out here for about a month. Yes, sir. Uh, six, eight weeks, six weeks. And uh, they've done extensive mapping to date. I don't know uh, percentage wise exactly how far you. You are from the end, but you, you're probably on the slippery side now. Um, so what you're going to see today is a pretty high level detailed uh, data driven set of maps and filters that they're going to explain the kinds of things they're going to find in the town. So that's what we set out to do because the EDC felt that we couldn't, with all the money that's coming out for broadband and, and all the work that's being done, we actually didn't know what we had here. So we wanted to know what we had before we started to decide what we need. And so that's why we set out on this study. And I will just turn the floor over to you guys. And uh, tell them what you've been finding. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so I've, I've been vaccinated, so I'm, I'm feeling kind of comfortable about doing this. Uh, it's okay with you guys. Please let me know how much time you've got and I'll Squeeze this presentation into your into your time slot. Okay. So as Doug said, part of what we're doing here is to try and, and go out and map all of the broadband infrastructure in the county. And it's not been any small task. You guys have got some roads lead to nowhere. A lot of them. I think we found most of them. I want to just kind of give you some visual items that's going to help you as you're looking at this at this presentation today. So when we start talking about things, you're going to go, oh, that's one of those. Okay. So part of what we're looking for when we're out in the field, especially when we're trying to find fiber routes, are either going to be the white posts that are about this big around with an orange cap on the top of it. It's a fiber marker, and it usually has the name of the company that's that has put fiber in the ground or you find these things kind of hidden in the grass, right? And you got to get out and look and say, oh, this was Merit Network, or we had uh, CenturyLink, or we had at and So you, part of what we do is, is, is investigate, it's detective work, a lot of manual work to try and get out and try and track and trace all of these things down. Now, when we're, when we're doing that, we're looking for things that could be as small as this, which is a two pair of fiber cable. And it's not really easy to find, especially when you're driving down the road when it's raining and you're trying to look up at a pole or figure out if that's in the ground. Uh, the other things that we might be trying to find while we're out in the field could be a fixed wireless dish that's attached to somebody's house pointing towards a tower in the area. It could belong to a customer who subscribes to M33 or Lakeshore Broadband or somebody else. We have these between the school and the bus barn, and you don't know who they belong to. So part of what we do is take this handy dandy spectrum analyzer that we have. It's for those of you who might have been in the military, this is a this is a 2021 oscilloscope. Basically, is all it is. Test radio frequencies and it lets you know what sort of signal is transmitting between here and the other point. 
Uh, the other things that we're looking for while we're out in the field might be evidence of fiber, especially in the air on something like this, which is called a splice enclosure. In this particular case, you've got a 24 strand fiber coming in and a four strand fiber going out. And this is typically going to go into a building or facility and provides their connectivity inside. So these are the types of things that we're trying to find while we're out in the field working. And let's have a look and see what sort of things we, we found so far. Okay, so the first item I want to share with you is the, the, the items, the icons that we call asset points. Now, these are kind of random, but there's going to be bunches of them, and we'll get in and start discussing them in some fashion. So as you can see, we're probably about 99% finished with the county, we think. Uh, we have tried to provide as much information as possible. When you see an icon that looks like this on the screen, that means we encountered a road closure. It's probably a seasonal road, might have been a snowmobile trail, could have been private property. So we've tried to mark every place that we've had road closures that we were unable to get to. We also try and do Keeping it simple. Pedestals. Pedestals are simply those little small green things you see sticking up out of the ground. They could belong to the telephone company. They might belong to a cable television company. So we, we will look at these and we will sort these. But basically, the majority of what this means to you is we did an awful lot of work in areas where you don't have broadband because most of the telephone companies here are not offering service at or above the FCC defined definition of broadband, which is 25 megabits per second download, three megabits per second upload. What this does, however, for us is it gives us an idea of where the existing copper infrastructure is at. And as you'll note, when we start kind of going through some of these other, uh, some of these other websites, we can compare data against the other websites with what we have found here to, to see if there's anything exciting to tell you. So we're going to come back to this screen in a minute. The next thing that we might be looking for here might be splice enclosures. Splice enclosures are typically a cabinet that's going to contain something similar to this. So when we're looking for splice enclosures, we're assuming that we're, we're looking for this in areas where a provider may be offering fiber to the home service or where a carrier like Windstream, Frontier, CenturyLink, or AT&T may have its own proprietary network and they've got splice cabinets along the way, and they're using those fiber optic cables to provide service over their DSL network in, in, in order to kind of, you know, consider it uh, bringing a fire hose in with a soda straw going out, okay? So these fiber cabinets or these, these splice enclosures that we have popped up in a couple of different areas of importance. The first one, and I'm not sure how, how you pronounce it, so I'll, I'll apologize. Mercado? Yeah. Okay. So the first one's down here around Mercado, and this is what we found its infrastructure that belongs to all band. This is where we know for certain now that they're providing fiber to the home. We'll talk about their speeds later, but we were able to confirm this. And then the area up here in this portion of the county is also an area that's where service is provided by all band and they're offering fiber to the home. Um, there is a very small presence. I'm guessing Fairview is over here. There's a very small presence coming into the county and right down this loop on Highway 75 that stops about right here that belongs to a company in the next county over called M33 Broadband. They advertised 
for years that they've offered service in this area, and that was the only evidence of them we could find. About two miles. Then we may also be looking for <clears throat> these, and this may be a little more difficult to see or find because there's not going to be many of them. These are the central office locations that we were able to identify in the county that belong to the incumbent local exchange carrier. So yesterday we found two that belong to CenturyLink down in the southwest corner of the county. Uh, and then we, we found a couple scattered out through here that, that belong to the other providers. Those central offices, when combined with DSLAMs or digital subscriber line amplitude multiplexers, <laughs> is what provides you with your DSL service to your household. So the central offices are the, you know, the old buildings are typically square, they're made out of composite stone or, or brick. Those are the buildings where all of the wires kind of came in and terminated for the telephone company. That really means less to us when we're looking out at the service in the field for copper technology than this one does. This one is the location of the actual DSLAM studio area that we were able to identify. So these are the areas where CenturyLink, AT&T, Frontier, and, and others uh, are offering DSL service throughout their network via copper. Now, in addition, especially down in this lower corner here in this territory that belongs to CenturyLink, in addition to the DSLAMs, we also found uh, ADSL repeaters, which allow the company to provide high-speed internet, but yet not quite broadband internet. So we start getting into the meat and potatoes of the other part, which is to look at the routes of things. Uh, and I'll explain all of these routes to you as we're chatting. Everything that you see up in the upper uh, northwest corner with the gold dotted lines are the areas where all band is offering its fiber home service. So in addition to having the, the, the icons that show cabinets, we've got these lines that actually show you the wraps. This is probably the most important part of the map. I think if you're looking at it and want to study it, because now what you can tell is <clears throat> where your gaps are in, in, in the county, okay? This really is kind of the important piece and part right here. So you, you know you've got all band here, you know you've got a small section of all band here, and then you've got some cable television service that belongs to Charter which runs along Hubbard Lake and pretty much runs along the lake shore. These dark orange lines are supposedly the routes of fiber optic carriers in your county that are offering middle mile service. In other words, this is supposed to be where Merit Network is at, Everstream, ACD, Peninsula Fiber and others. They're not necessarily there, I know that probably doesn't come as a big surprise to you, but as we start getting home now and manipulating this map, what we'll begin to do, for example, is we'll go back here and we'll, we'll tell this filter, I want you to show me everything where we found a fiber marker in the county. Well, I'll try that again. Turn points on. There we go. So every one of these little dots are places where we found markers like this, or those, you know, those big orange and white uh, markers sticking up out of the ground. And so as we begin to analyze them, what we want to do is we want to compare those against the routes for the middle mile providers. I'm gonna go turn this on and tell it I wanna look at fiber transport. So there you go. You got your fiber transport lines 
and you've got all of these fiber markers. So what we hope to find in order to confirm the presence of a provider is that one of these fiber markers we have here matches the line. In this case, the fiber marker says it belongs to Great Lakes ComNet. And we know Great Lakes ComNet was acquired by Everstream. So if I click on this route, that's an Everstream route. We found an Everstream marker. We're kind of happy there that those two lined up. And at least for this portion of the roadway that you see where the, you got those markers going out towards Haynes Township, we can we, we found proof. We haven't found proof yet in any of these other areas that you see that are kind of void. Now this gets complicated because fiber providers sometimes piggyback off of somebody else's network. So the fact that Everstream or ACD tells me that they're here doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to find something that's got their name on it. They may very well have leased dark strands of fiber from Merit Network or vice versa. So what we hope we do at, when we're done with the analysis is to begin to be able to have enough confirmation to say, we talked to the folks at Merit Network, they are in fact leasing 48 fibers from Everstream and that's why the route looks a little wonky on here, but now we can verify that it lines up. So this is a very, very, very complex and, and uh, difficult thing to try and do. And the, the easy work just got finished. And going back home and starting to interpret this and figuring out what the next steps are now is where it gets to be a little complicated. So when we take the filters off and we go back to this original map, <laughs> this is where we're at. Now, let's talk about fixed wireless a second. Okay, because you've only got one provider in you only got one provider in the community that we have been able to verify the existence on, and that provider is Lakeshore Broadband. We were of the opinion when we arrived here that Lakeshore Broadband provided point to multi-point service systemically across the county. Found it's completely opposite of that. They're very limited and they're only offering point to point connections, which means anybody in your community can subscribe to it, but it's not the most effective way of getting it done. The point to point transmitter or, or transmission system, what the providers typically do is they will have multiple transmitters on, an, on a power site, 60 degree sectors, and they'll have six of them making up 360 degree radius. And then uh, each of those transmit sectors is capable of facilitating multiple providers simultaneously. What these guys are doing is literally kind of like the string in the can, okay? You got one end, I got the other, and you and I are the only two that can talk on that, on that connection as opposed to me holding a can and all of you getting strings and cans. So we were a little disappointed to find out that the coverage is not as, as broad as Lakeshore had, I won't say advertised or let us believe, but it certainly is not a countywide network. Um, we wanna start taking this information and beginning to, I've gotta move this, around a little bit so I can see all my tabs here. We want to take the information that we have on the maps and we want to start comparing it to some of the other information and notes that we have already done some work on. So what I'm hoping to do now is begin to share with you some of the federal research we've, we've completed. Stop sharing for just a moment. <laughs> That's 
in heaven. Any questions while we uh, break? Someone is going on. All right, now let me go start the screen share again. And I apologize for those of you that are watching remotely. I'm an engineer, that doesn't mean I can run a Zoom call. Okay, so all of the information we found here kind of traces to other places because what we have to do is kind of tidy this up so that when we start putting a report together for you, you have confidence in us that we have gone out and looked under every rock behind every tree, turned over every leaf, and, and, and have been able to tell you everything that's going on at the state and federal level. So we're going to start here. This is the United States Department of Agriculture Reconnect Grant map. There's two important things that we found here. Number one is if I were to turn this layer and legend on and tell it all I want to see is the area where there are pending applications in the county. And I click on those pending application areas. Uh, it turns out that what you see in the gray here that shows up as protected borrowers belongs to all band communications. So we know now before we pick up the phone and we call all band, we know by looking at this map that they have borrowed money from the United States Department of Agriculture here, which is probably around the Mankato area, up here where we've already confirmed their presence, but it also appears that there's some pockets up near Hubbard Lake and up along the waterfront. We haven't found any evidence they've built anything there. Maybe that they just haven't gotten around to it, but <clears throat> at least we know that they've borrowed money. And because they are a protected borrower, the United States Department of Agriculture will not loan money to anybody else in those areas. I mean, that's what it means to be a protected borrower, okay? They might grant money to somebody else, but they will not reloan money to somebody else to, to build infrastructure in that area for broadband. And that is one of those situations where you have to sit back and say, okay, how long has this loan been out there? How long has it taken them to, to get this far? How much longer do they have to go? And it turns out that, that that loan is still open and available and they're on a construction timeline that say to build out at the end of next year, then that's a good thing for us to note and report because that means you're gonna have some fiber at home popping up yet in areas that we hadn't discussed before. <clears throat> and then we have this other layer Well, I thought I was going to be able to get to it okay, but with everything else that's on my uh, screen, let me try doing this again. Okay, now we're going to look at the one called pending applications, because this one is just about equally as fun and important. <clears throat> And I'll start the screen share again. What you're seeing on the screen now within the county, all of those yellow highlighted blocks, even though I've just got one highlighted in the center, 
or these blocks belong to Northern Michigan University. They've gone out and applied for a grant or an, they put in an application to provide service here. And my guess is that they plan on using some spectrum that they have called Educational Broadband Service Spectrum, which is uh, back in 1964 during the Kennedy administration when it was first issued out, it's called Instructional Television Fixed Service. And it was the type of spectrum that colleges, high schools, universities, et cetera, would use so that they could do satellite learning, talking head television, if you will, right? Transmitting from one studio to, to a campus location, maybe where they didn't have a professor and they just had students coming in. <clears throat> Over the years, that spectrum has been utilized by companies like Northern Michigan University, but more importantly, these educational entities have historically leased it out to companies like Sprint, Clearwire, uh, American Telecasting and others, that spectrum typically had between 15 and 30 year lease terms on it. it. Looks like as Northern Michigan University's leases are expiring, they're starting to recapture that back. And my guess is that they're planning on trying to put in a fixed wireless uh, mesh or uh, excuse me, a, a WiMAX network or a fixed wireless LTE network in the area. Now, I'm an RF engineer. I've driven through your county. The cell phone doesn't work very well. <laughs> this is not going to work very well either. Okay. You got pine trees and lots of oak and lots of forest. So despite their, their, you know, their, their best efforts to put an application here and potentially provide you another layer of service, we noted as we were driving around that if I can't see a tower. A home can't see a tower either. And you don't have really that many towers throughout the county that are tall enough to be above the tree lines. We found one down at the north, uh, the, the southwest corner of the county. It's owned by the state of Michigan, about 350 feet tall. And that's the biggest one we've seen. That's one in Glenny. Yeah, it's down yeah. near Glenny. Yeah. yeah. So most of the other area of, of the community, these towers that we have been seeing, especially with companies like Lakeshore Broadband are maybe hundred feet tall and the trees are 80 feet tall. Right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> fixed wireless may have some opportunities here. Um, and I can probably help guide you through some of that, but I'm going to tell you from the onset, I don't think that it's going to be the type of technology that's going to fix your broadband problems here. It, it's, it's going to, it's going to get service to pockets of homes in the right locations, but it's not something that's going to be for everybody across the county. Now, this next map that I'm going to show you is the Connect America Fund broadband map. There's some important information in here as well that starts to drive back to the companies that we looked at earlier. Okay, so this is this is the county. Now, <clears throat> this map is, is a map that the Universal Service Administrative Company hosts. They are a civilian organization that was, that was formed by the Federal Communications Commission to provide civilian oversight of federal money. And their job is literally to just do audits, to cross check, to make sure that everybody's applying properly, completing their construction properly, reporting properly. And for most folks, looking at this map doesn't mean a hill of beans. <clears throat> but what I like to do is come in here and, and start to try and find some information out that's indigenous about providers in your area. So let's start with, for example, Frontier. If I go sort this out and just tell it, just show me where Frontier Service Territory is in this county or, or in the nearby area. This is pretty much <clears throat> the pockets of homes where Frontier has accepted money under the Connect America Fund and is in process of deploying and upgrading their network to offer 10 megabits per second by one megabit per second. Okay, it's not fast, but it's better than kicking the shin when all you've had is dial up your satellite. 
And based on what we have found as we've driven through their network, we can tell you that it appears that they are in a position to potentially offer greater services or greater levels of speed because they have taken that 10 by one, which was their minimum commitment. They've run fiber, fiber optic cables to their DSLAMs and to their devices. They've installed new cabinets in their portions of the county. And it looks like they could eventually be in a position to offer 25 by three. They have no federal obligation to do so. Make that clear, okay? Then you have Allband. Now Allband, on the other hand, Apparently, their federal obligation under the Connect America Fund through the ACAM, which is the alternative uh, Connect America Fund model, basically what it stands for, their, their commitment appears to be to offer service 25 by 3. So they're meeting the, the, the minimum federal definition of broadband. What they're offering is actually a little faster than that. And then we'll get back to that discussion in a minute. But according to this, at least based on the money that they received from the federal government and the money that they've borrowed from USDA, they should be in a position to continue to, you know, to provide a relatively robust network. As you're looking at these, all of these dots represent a specific house. Okay, you'll see that there's an actual address on here. So I could go through and download for you all of the homes that are supposedly served in the county that, or have been provisioned for service from Frontier and Allband and Century Link and at and so that you could see where you may have opportunities that could be happening in the future from your incumbent local exchange carriers. Would you mind pulling up um, 2066 Wilson Road? 2066 Wilson Road. And what, what town should I put in there? Oh, let me go turn this off first. Take that filter out. C-U-R-R-A. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Federal government apparently doesn't know that you exist. That's more than I've got. Well. Uh, it didn't. It didn't return something here. Now I'll tell you why that could happen. Um, depending upon new service territory that you're in, they may have simply entered the latitude and longitude of your house with a description that says near the intersection of 75 and 65, rather than putting an address in. I see that happen a lot. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> I've gone through and I look and I've looked at this. So we know. I, I know that. In the report that I gave Doug recently, I think I told you CenturyLink and uh, Frontier are doing 10 by 1 commitments, mm -hmm. all bands doing 25 by 3. Couldn't find anything for Now I'm going to close this out and go back to this other map for a second because this is kind of an important thing as well. So what we've done here in this case is we have we have entered all of the exchange boundaries for the local exchange carriers so we know whose territory starts and stops where. Okay. So for example, if I you know if I click on this, what should happen here at some point is that pardon me? Move in the title show. What should, what should end up happening here? There you go. Okay, so you can see all band communications, uh, exchange boundary. We come over here. We can see that this territory is frontier north, going from Curran down to the south part of the county. And right about there, it's north of Glenny is where they butt up the Century Lake. And you've got, for those of you in the room, you'll, this will be no surprise. That section that says unassigned, it's, nobody lives there, it's all forced. Yeah. Okay. So no, no telephone service would expect it to be found there. 
So when we're out in the field, it's helpful for us to have this information because rather than just assuming that one of those pedestals belonged to Frontier, we want to know that we're inside their exchange boundary and then we're actually going to get out and we're going to start having looks at what we have found. <clears throat> if I were to turn all of these things back on, I'm going to zoom in here and see if I can find a couple of items because we do often take pictures. Uh, it's important for us, it's important for me because two weeks from now or a month from now, when I'm looking at this map, I'm going to have to remember what we did and where we were at and what we found. So we often try and take pictures of these things so that if somebody says, well, how do I know you were there? Or how do I know that this thing exists? What we hope to have for you is photo documentation that says, that's what the new D-SLAM looks like for Frontier out in this part of the county. And it's this cabinet that's the new one that was installed under the Connect America Fund. There are other portions of the county, if, if you have driven around, you'll notice that there's some larger ones that kind of, they're almost this size. They're, they're probably four feet wide and maybe six to seven feet tall, but they're mounted on the side of a utility pole. And Frontier will have a fiber flag or different things around it. So this is why I know that they're beginning to, to get, having the capability of upgrading their network. So all of the photos that we're going to have here are going to have some meaning to us. I mean, obviously, this helps us remember, okay, this was Frontier's territory. I wasn't hallucinating. <clears throat> so I'll, I won't say every icon that's on here has a picture behind it, but I'll tell you that the important icons that are on here for us have a picture behind it because I've got to sit back and start remembering uh, what everybody's equipment looked like and and where it ran and what it did. So that as I'm trying to put a report together for you to make some recommendations on perhaps how you spend some of your ARPA funds, um, I wanna make sure that I'm not trying to mislead you. From an engineer's perspective, I wanna tell you, yeah, this is an area I think could organically grow out from the provider over the course of the next 24 months versus this is an area where you probably need to put some money in because nothing's gonna happen if you don't, okay? I'm going to minimize this for a moment and go back and show you this map. The end of every day, we download uh, our drive tracks so that we have the ability to try and determine where we have been in the county and to begin to look at or analyze whether or not we've missed anything. And I want to make sure that we're all in agreement before we leave and go home or before I decide I need to send people back here. Because based on what we have found, there's nothing in this area that's just forest. There's this one housing subdivision that we kind of stumbled on and all band provide service out there to peers. There's a cut, there's a little teeny tiny place over here. It's got some cottages in it. So every place geographically that you see these big chunks, you can see that we've at least attempted to try and drive through the areas. And that's how we knew it was state property or federal property and that there was no infrastructure out there. Uh, and then we tried coming back into the population center. So every night what we do is we come back in and we try and find the streets maybe that we missed. And I think somewhere down here around Glenny, we have found uh, one street that we missed. And over here in Harrisville, we've got maybe half a dozen that we've got to get to, and we'll probably knock those out this afternoon. So 
we have all of this other documentation that we, we try and do in addition to what goes on the map just to show where we've been and make sure that we haven't missed anything that's important. Huh? Uh, I don't know about lost, but we got turned around a couple of times. <laughs> and you know, and had to look at our navigation system and our and our satellite maps and everything and go, yeah, I think maybe we missed a turn back here. You weren't driving very fast in your <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Uh, I was never lost. That's right. All right, so let me uh, let me stop the screen share on that one and kind of get back to the other items here. And then we'll start trying to wrap this up to see what sort of questions that you might have. Uh, okay, so here's another one, Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. This was an auction that the FCC had um, not too long ago. And several people participated in it. And it was kind of like a reverse auction. The FCC said, uh, the guy with the lowest bid wins, and you need to come in and, and bid and tell us what you're going to provide, uh, how you're going to provide service, where you're going to provide service. So you're bidding on this at the census block level. You've got some, here's some additional things, some additional opportunities for providers to receive federal subsidies to expand. This area in the orange it belongs, and I need to change the map. So let me. Go back to the screen share for this one, please. That way those that are viewing in the audience can see what we're talking about. Okay. So everything that you see in orange was uh, bids that were provided by a company called Mercury Wireless. They are a wireless company based out of Indiana. Uh, they've been in business for a while. They have applied for broadband grants here in the state under the Connect Michigan's Community Broadband Grant Program through DTMB. They've not applied for anything in Alcoma County that I'm aware of. And the one thing about RDOF that you have to keep in mind while there's a possibility and probability that these guys are gonna get funded, they've got a lot of years, eight years, six, eight years before they have to build anything out. There's this progressive kind of defaulting procedure where you have to have a percentage done every year up to a certain point. And if you haven't done it, you get penalized in that maybe year six or seven, they can withdraw these census blocks and turn them back in for round two, which means in theory, anywhere from six to 16 years from now, somebody may or may not build out these areas, okay? That's not the sort of federal obligation that I particularly like to hitch my wagon to. Uh, now, in this case, you can see that they did above baseline and low latency, which indicates to me they're probably considering fixed wireless. There were a couple of locations in here that we found where uh, we weren't quite sure who this belongs to. Rural Electric Cooperative Consortium, we might conclude, could be an area that's somehow affiliated with all band. But typically to be in the Electric Cooperative Consortium, you have to be an electric cooperative. And I'm not sure if whatever that's Press 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what they've done is they've come in here and they've bid on several of these blocks in the area to provide service, as has CenturyLink. Now CenturyLink saying they're going to provide gigabit service, which means fiber to the home. Same thing that Press Gill says, gigabit low latency. So you, you know, you may have a significant amount of, of build out that could occur here over time. And in this case, Mercury Wireless says they're going to do big bit service. So you cross your fingers, right? Uh, in some states, they're kind of taking the opinion that while we're going to recognize that you are an RDOF winner today, if the home is not served with broadband, it's unserved. We don't care what you might be doing in six years or eight years. The folk, you know, please explain that to the guy in the house that he's got to sit back and wait six more years to get service. He's not very happy about it. So we've reviewed the art off map to try and make sure we know what's going on in your community. 
And then we've started looking at the, the different service offerings that we have from the providers. Uh, and then this is, this is one that I wanted to share with you because I thought it was kind of important. This shows you where all bands territory supposedly is at. So they've got it color coded. They're telling you that the wireless over here in the red has got service speeds of seven megabits download by three megabits upload. And the dark blue is 60 by three. And unfortunately, none of that benefits your county because your county border doesn't even start till we get up here around Hubbard Lake. So what they've got in your service territory is, is the fiber to the home. And, you know, hopefully they're going to expand. And down here in the gold, you see down around the Mikado area where they've got service. I could continue on like this literally for days. I mean, just trying to go through and provide details. I've, I've given Doug a summary report already where I've started to look at what the pricing structures are for each of the providers, how much they charge, where their service territories are at. And we're gonna do our best when we get finished with this map to, to show that to you in some sort of visual depiction. So that when we're talking about a provider, you can look at it on the map and go on, I know exactly where he's talking about now. So this is what we've managed to get done in the last 30 days or so. Uh, I hope you're not disappointed in the results so far. We still got quite a bit to go, quite a bit of rope to push up the hill yet. And we want to make sure, you know, that over the course of the next month or two, as we're beginning to develop our report and recommendations for EDC, that we, we're getting your feedback and your comments. Okay, you guys hear about it from your constituents all the time. You know where the gripes and complaints are coming from. And because your commissioners here and your residents here, you also know that there's areas in this county that just may never see broadband, okay? It's just not gonna happen. There, there's this, and I'm gonna go back to the map for just a second, because there's this one area that we just almost talked ourselves out of driving to yesterday. And the reason behind that is, as we were kind of slogging along through The area out by Alcona Park. So we're looking at all of this stuff on the satellite imagery, right? We're seeing rooftops all around the lake. And we thought, oh my gosh, here's a place we got to go drive to. So we drove the entirety of the lake only to find out that it was all camping and RVs. And then we saw this little area out here too. And I thought, surely out in the middle of the forest, that's got to be RVs and camping as well. It wasn't. All. It's a subdivision. And when we drove out there, interestingly enough, we found that there's a center link to offer service out there. And this was one of those places where we found, uh, and I've actually got a picture for this. I just haven't uploaded it yet. We actually found a, an ADSL repeater sitting on this particular corner pedestals out in front of all these people's houses. Now, based on the information that we have, that we downloaded from the Federal Communications Commission Form 477 data, CenturyLink doesn't even report that they offer service in there. This is the part that makes us get crazy, okay? I want to zoom out because I want to explain this to you, this, this whole anomaly about the federal reporting is kind of a, a, a catch as catch can type situation. The federal government has providers file a report twice a year, March 1st and September 1st, and it's called Form 477. <laughs> now, rather than me providing an update to the federal government as a provider by service address or by street territory, I'm asked to do it at the census block level. Okay? Any one of you, let's just say that that table is a census block and that represents that whole big dark or white blue area up there on the screen. Any one of you that can get service, and the only one of you, you happen to be the lucky guy, okay? You can get service because you live close enough to this intersection right here where CenturyLink maybe has facilities. 
Well, according to the federal government, because you can get service, everybody at the table can get equivalent service. Now look at this for a second, okay? You see this territory here where CenturyLink's been telling the federal government, I can offer 10 megabits down and one megabit upload, except I don't offer service to anybody in here. So when it's not color coded and it's carved out, either, so what could have happened over time is let's say, uh, a year ago when CenturyLink reported service, they couldn't offer 10 by one in this territory, but because of their cash subsidies, they've recently upgraded it and now maybe we can. So part of what we have to do as the next level of takeaway is to sit down with you and say, do you guys know anybody that lives out here? If you do, can you put me in touch with them? Because I need to ask them some questions. I, I want them to do a speed test for us. And I want to find out what level of service they subscribe to and what they've been told by CenturyLink they can subscribe to. Because now we have to start getting through this. This is where we kind of have to do the sniff test and this don't smell right. Okay. So all of this information that we have that, that, that we bring to the table for you is to start to try and give you these visual representations and say, according to CenturyLink, they're claiming that they can offer 60 megabit download speeds and five megabit upload speeds in everything that's dark purple. So what I hope that we find as we're out and about is something that maybe looks like this. Where I can tell you, oh yeah, we went out. We found a, an ADSL or pop potentially VDSL repeater from the area. I've got to go do research on the equipment manufacturing type. I'm assuming looking at the logo on there that you see on the front, the thing that kind of looks like the little swirly circle. That's probably something that's manufactured by a company called Calix. My guess is that, that that device right there mounted to that pole can provide high speed internet service to about 24 to 48 households in the area. And sitting next to that, and I wish I had zoomed out on the picture a little better, sitting next to that, this big green box that you see is probably a splice enclosure where they've actually got fiber optic cable there. Uh, it's feeding their old cross connect, which is the box that has everybody's old copper lines in it. And they're using this device, to bring the fiber in, it converts it, makes it DSL, it goes back out and goes in the cross connect cabinet. How do I know that this is working? Well, you can see on the screen that there's these green lights on here. So when we're out documenting it, we always want to see if these are green or red or amber. Okay, green is good. Amber, is maybe you had a hiccup. Red is dead. Okay. So there is a strong possibility that CenturyLink's not outside the realm of, of, of being correct. They may actually be offering service at those speeds in that area. Once again, this is a good opportunity for me to say, do you know anybody that lives out in or around Glenny or this area where they're saying that they can do 80 megabit by 10 megabit? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I live in Glenny. I'm the township supervisor. That's why I'm here to see what you got going. But uh, we, our service, uh, we have something like for our Wi Fi. And it is just, I mean, it's, I've seen snails move faster. Yeah, you say we're hitting five, but the, it's hardly, hardly ever. Well, and 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 that's where, that's where we have to start trying to, I won't say separate fact from fiction, but we we've, we've really got to start trying to figure out what's going on because if we're going to help drive you in a position to go after additional government funds, to do a broadband grant here, maybe through a public private partnership. Um, or if you're considering trying to take some of your ARPA funds and give it to a provider, you need to make sure we're putting it in the right places and with the right folks. This equipment is also new out here. It looks to me visually like it's been put in in the last year or less because there's no tarnish or patina or weathering on the outside of these devices. 
you know, that sign usually goes off of them after a couple of good rainstorms. So they're, they're still kind of fresh. But all of these dots that you see out here that we've put in are locations typically where we found that sort of equipment. Turn your uh, point notes on see if there's any damaged ones out there. That's, oh yeah, and then, and then yes, and then a couple of other things that we do for you, and then you'll probably find this kind of interesting as well. Um, Excuse me, I I got to attend another meeting upstairs, so uh, but I appreciate all your guys are doing. Thank you, sir. I need the info. Thanks for coming. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the you know kind of last item just to, to just let you see what we're working on places like this where we find. Uh, where we maybe have a general point note, we have typically done something that we thought was interesting. <laughs> that is, you know, you gotta have to turn your head sideways and I apologize for that, but what you're seeing is a pedestal that doesn't have a lid on it. Okay, that pedestal's open with weather conditions. Pretty good probability it's not bothering the phone too much. High probability it's screwing up the DSL, okay? Every time we see something like that, I can almost guarantee that the person downstream from there is having problems. People may not report it because their phone is working okay and they're used to having slow internet, so it's they've never thought nothing about it. Okay, this is the kind of information where we have to start teaching your constituents if you don't complain, it'll never get better because the folks at CenturyLink may not even know that the lid is off. The main, you know, and the lid's laying there. If you look in the, in the grass, you can actually see it right there. Um, so every time we find something like this that we think just looks a little out of place or uh, a, a little wonky, we're probably going to take a picture of it. Another one, you know, you find those out everywhere through the county. So it doesn't matter whether it's Frontier, St. Lake. This is the kind of thing that can cause your internet over your copper network to be crappy. Just like a tree isn't good for fixed wireless, this isn't good for electronic components and copper wires, okay? Doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that when that thing gets wet, it prob probably wreaks havoc to several dozen houses in the area. So all of this information that we're, we're trying to gather and to provide to you uh, will, will ultimately end up being in an interactive map. And it's going to show you a lot of the results of the things that we found. And it's going to give you that sort of documentation or substantiation that you can provide to the federal government or anybody else as you are going after broadband grants or, or trying to seek funds. And you can say, here's why. If the phone company is leaving the infrastructure like this and they don't care enough to fix it, then we as citizens have to do, maybe, you know, we have to take upon ourselves to do something to make it better, whether that's inviting here to have a seat at the table to talk and show them this sort of information, explain why we're frustrated with what's going on in the county, or to get the local technician, whoever he or she may be, to spend a bit more time trying to go out and police their territories and, and trying to find, you know, this kind of stuff and make it get better. So I'll pause for just a moment because I've probably sat up here on the soapbox enough and and, and harp about what I found. Um, the last thing that I want to tell you is that part of the contract that we had with the county was to, to try and identify infrastructure that's out there that could be used. That whole southwest portion of your county has got old abandoned cable television systems in it everywhere. I mean, there's, there's coaxial cable everywhere out there. We couldn't find a head in. You, you'd get down the road, you know, you'd go around one of them lakes and you, you'd see it and you'd go, wow, you know, we got to go find who the cable operator is. And then two miles down the road, you'd notice that there's four miles of cable that's been cut off the poles and you can just see the lashing wire spooled up around the strand. So it's a dead system. Uh, some of it may be salvageable. We need to perhaps try and do some digging, find out who owned it last. A lot of folks we talked to, when, when we'd see a, a cable drop coming from a pole to their house, we'd ask them, who's your cable television provider? And nine times out of 10, they said Dish or FuseNet or right? nobody identified Charter or Suddenlink or Met. So 
I'm guessing that these are systems that were probably installed back in the 70s uh, to provide seasonal entertainment television to the folks that got these summer cabins and stuff around the lakes. And it just, you know, television isn't profitable. So they just kind of abandoned the networks and walked away. All right. I'll stop the screen share at this point and then. Uh, if you guys have questions, hit me with them now. Uh, on one screen you showed that showed that all band had some areas that they are a guaranteed provider in there, but yet have not done nothing. How does that um, what is that? Can that can they be the guaranteed provider in that area forever? I mean uh, they've gotten money, but yet they haven't done anything. Yeah, typically when, when USDA loans that money, there's there will be a timeline before they'll default you out. They'll do everything they can not to do that because USDA prides itself on not allowing people to default on their loans. So they'll nudge them and, and give them right up to the last day. I think part of what we need to do and try and find out is I need to go back home and I need to find the application, see what sort of deadlines and dates are on it. And if I can't, then part of my plan is to pick up the phone and call the local general manager who we've already attempted to be in contact with and just ask some questions and see if we can get some straight answers. Because I know the one area is, is Black River where I've lived for 30 years and we've never heard anything about all that. And there yet they, that whole area shows that they're, they have that area wrapped up and it's like, I mean, you know, how, how does that work? I mean, they've got money, but they have not done a thing. I think this is part of part of the process is uh, once you gather this information and you know that level of service and what is and what isn't, then it's time to sit down with, with those particular providers that, that say they're doing one thing but they're actually doing something else and it's, you know, it defeats the fire a little bit and, and say, well, what's your plan? You say you're going to do it and you've got USDA money. Where are you in your timeline? I mean, it's it's putting us in a better position uh, to be uh, the true customer. It's got a loud voice now. Yes. And of us chasing them, they're going to start running after us a little bit. <clears throat> I do believe that's going to happen. And, that, and then it, that doesn't even count the new players that will be coming into this market that aren't latest. They have already locked up territories and, and that type of thing. Uh, again, what was interesting about what I saw today was that little blurb at the top of the, top of the north Presqu'ile piece, and and they're just hanging there right now. You know, we already know what they're doing, but you know, now they got consumers in their in their hip pocket for their polls. They made some arrangement. I don't know. I got out of the middle of that one, but they did. So more and more. Some of these levels of service that already exist here aren't even going to be acceptable um, to, to what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, there probably are parts of this county that we won't get to, or it'll be difficult to get to. Uh, there's a whole lot of exposed areas in the county that are easy to get to. So, uh, go ahead. Yeah. On your southeast corner, okay. ATT advertises. And I can get their service, but I can't. Now, is that through? Um, I mean, does Spectrum have a hold on that? That's no, but so for the incumbent local exchange here, remember the map I showed you had all the red lines to this central link is on the page. That's that's like a guaranteed service territory. No other phone company can ever come in there. Okay, so where, wherever at and is at is there exclusively. But I can't get there. I've got, I have their phone service, but I don't have their TV service. Right. You can't get it. And, and, and they may not offer it there. I mean, sometimes there are franchise requirements and licensing issues. Um, they would offer it to you through direct TV. Right. That's how they're doing it now. And you may be in a location where, because of the look angle, which is the way you've got to put your satellite like this, 
you may be in an area where they've already classified it as not possible. It, it, and the other thing that you have to sometimes do is be the squeaky hinge because they, if you can go type your address in and they can tell you that they can't get service and the technician can come out there tomorrow and hook you up. This is fascinating. Yeah, this is, you know, this is how I've spent my last 40 years is trying to, to, to work through all of this. Um, it looks like to me you got a lot of opportunity maybe to partner with Charter because if I started taking that area down there around Glenny and showing them all the homes around the lakes and stuff, you know, and the fact that there's already no cable system there, that seems like a good investment. Seems like that's the kind of thing that they would go apply for through the CMIC grant funds, okay? Uh, trying to encourage CenturyLink or at and or Frontier to make their service better. I put you in contact with the folks that are the in charge of the government affairs divisions and, and regulatory issues for the state of Michigan. That's good conversations to have. Locally, you got all band, you know, they're limited. You got Lakeshore Broadband. I wouldn't expect a lot out of them. I think they're doing a wonderful job, but I also think they're highly overpriced. It seems that uh, we had a customer that we talked to the other day that told us he was doing maybe 15 megabits of service for his, because his wife is a school teacher and she has to do remotely. Uh, and that they were paying like $175 a month. Yeah, and had to pay to put like an 80 foot mast up on their house just to get it, just to get that service. Yeah. And they throttle. And they And they throttle, yeah. 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 So I, I think he told us, and I've got the information, so I'm paraphrasing it now, don't quote me. I think Lakeshore Broadband offers you something like the maximum is seven megabits per second, and then it's $10 a month for every megabit above that you have. So if we, if it started out at sixty nine ninety five for seven, and he had to get eight more megabits, that's eighty more dollars, right? That's putting him in one hundred and fifty plus fees and taxes. And you know, and again, he feels like it's better than nothing, but it by no means suits his needs or hers either one. Yeah, and I think he was in an area where he said he had a Verizon booster and an AT and T booster, and neither of them worked in his area, so he was paying on them. And and not getting any benefit from them. Yeah, and has been on the waiting list for Starband for two years. Yeah. Starlink. Starlink, excuse me, yeah. So we're gonna be finishing up the driving here shortly and then going home. And the next phase is to sit down and start looking at all this and trying to make sense of it and begin to put a report together to give to, to Doug at EDC and to, to, to share with you guys, okay? So he's going to be kind of a local point of contact. Any questions you need to get to me, just phone through him. And the same thing will happen where I'll say, man, I would really like to get some information from a consumer here, here, and here. And that's why I need to come back and hope y'all can help me with it. So, what can you do to help the cause? I mean, okay, we can, we can feed you, any one of us can feed you with somebody. I mean, we have to do nothing else to the whole fall and go knock on your door. Right. You know, but um, that's the part. What else can, is there anything else that we can do collectively or individually to help our EDC to help the cause of? There's quite a bit, and it's the simplest one. I think the easiest victory, you know, it's not a Hail Mary, but it's a guaranteed five yard touchdown pass is to start talking to the folks in the county that you know probably are financially challenged. There's a federal subsidy right now called the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program that where the federal government will pay $50 a month for you or you, or you. if you qualify financially, they'll give you a voucher for $50 to apply against the broadband connection. What was the program again? The Emergency Broadband okay. Benefit now, if you, you know, Section 8, your Social Security, you're on SNAP, right? And you those kind of things to qualify. And you have to, you, you, you go and apply to become eligible, and you have to apply to get service from a company that's an eligible provider. So I've given Doug that list, and I think 
ATB is an eligible provider. Uh, I think all band is an eligible provider. So we now know who has applied and who hasn't. That may help just get broadband adoption to increase in the county because my guess from driving around is maybe 15 to 20 percent of your county fits in that category pretty well. And this could be the, the difference between can I pay my electric bill and can I get broadband to my students? And that's really, I mean, that's the one thing that you guys can do to evangelize that will help this program a lot. And then we'll try and do, we'll, we'll try and stunt hard to beat bushes on the, on the other end of it. Uh, the other thing is to just tell folks that you're doing, you're trying to do something about it, that this study you know, a lot of people go, oh, you're wasting a lot of money on this study. Well, this is important because if we went and looked at the federal government's broadband map right now, you've got coverage out the wazoo in this county. You yeah. should be happy to live here. And what this report is trying to do is to say that that's wrong. Here's where the service is actually at, and here's where we've got these problem areas we have to address. So you know they need to realize that there's a vested interest here and that you guys are doing something about it not just talking it to death yeah from my perspective just doing what he said going to your constituents talking to the township supervisors talking it up tell them what you saw here today there was fact and there's fiction we're uncovering a lot of fiction but we're also uncovering a lot of facts yeah. so pretty soon we're going to kind of get a sense of where you need to go and we have I know there's money on the table, but we be very careful about what we use it for. Just, by the way, um, this didn't cost the county anything. This is right. a regulation. This was a grant, and uh, we got to cover you in the match. So for now, we're sitting at a good spot. But we're going to continue to try to, you know, I think this had a little meeting with John, and we're going to get a drop down on it. On the website now it's going to be populated with basic information so we'll use that as a way to measure your radio frequencies oh. so when we're trying when we're in the field and we're trying to determine if the fixed wireless providers actually offering service we measure the width of that channel and do a calculation to determine whether that channel is wide enough to offer broadband service oh. where it isn't we can tell you know we can tell you definitively he's not doing 25 foot three and so yeah. We do that, and we can do this with mobile wireless as well. So this is just a, you know, we, we, we have to take this and get out at most every tower that we find in the county and do those measurements. Um, the only other thing I could wrap up with is this. The Treasury Department just released, if I'm not mistaken, just on Friday maybe, just released their final rules on the eligibility of, of the ARPA funds, okay? Trust me, by the time you get home today, you're going to start getting calls from providers in the area wanting to know how much of that money you're willing to give them. And, it, and it's feeding frenzy because they look at it as being free money. If I were you, since you don't have a, a commitment or obligation until, unless I'm mistaken, until 2026, right. I'd sit pat, let us get through this report, oh, yeah. try and figure yeah. out what we can do to help give you some guidance and then figure out how you guys want to best help keep that money. I think we help 2024 to save what we're going to do with it and then right. to spend it. To spend it. 2026 to spend it. But we have to <coughs> what we're going to spend on. I think by 24. Right. This document that just oh, came yeah. out. Oh, All right. Yeah. 2,400 pages. The whole but, but I think you said the broadband section was like 124 pages. Yeah, it's big. And in that is the emergency broadband fund idea where that program at $50 a month was limited to six months. Oh, okay. And the new rules, I think you told me, that they're going to make it permanent at $30. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's after the six months or if it just starts when you, when you sign up and it's 30 bucks forever. Yeah, and I think, I, I may be wrong, I think August was the first month of the six for eligibility. So I think it was supposed to run through the end of this year, at $50 right. a month. And then under the new house bill, then that picks it up. It will be a permanent program at 30 bucks a month. 
So, you, you know, you have to kind of watch these programs yeah. because they're changing all the time. But I was really happy to hear that they sort of put out planning and then just set of guidelines that covered the hot water sewers, garbage, and all the things that I don't cover. So, uh, it took a while, but I had a late and I appreciate your patience. Hopefully, I didn't bore you tears. No, it's excellent. Nope, good day. Thank you. Well, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> especially when I see something. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, like he said, the easy part is almost over. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm just know. the question how long do you think it will take before you get a report from estimate? You know, I know that. Provided. Maybe I better not even ask that. No, 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 that's a good question. For, for, provided that I get home by the end of this month and, uh, and, and I'm not yanked off into another project somewhere, I'm hoping that about a month from now, I will be in a position to at least have framed the report and start to have some ideas and some concepts. I've got to start working with my GIS department so that we're putting the interactive map together in parallel. And ideally, I'd like to have something, the first draft of the report in Doug's hands in 60 days. Yeah, that's September. Yeah, that's November. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's more than that, I think. <laughs> will, you, will you circle back with us once we have it, or are you going to oh, do everything for us? Okay. Oh, if you want me to, I'll come back. I mean, I can do it remotely, but you know, I've enjoyed my stay here. I haven't gotten shot or threatened <laughs> too much. Yeah, you haven't been anywhere there. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it, I think your picture showed up on Facebook once or twice. What's this guy on the front? <laughs> Look, we had the we had the common sense, and I told Doug this. I said we've done this a number of years. We actually called ahead and talked to the sheriff's department. I sent them pictures of all of them, of all my staff and all the trucks and everything. And I said. We're creepy looking guys because we're out there driving around slowly in neighborhoods that have got the Curtis Watch program symbols on, and we're driving around the schools, which always gets us in trouble. And I said, you know, if you're an observer looking at us in the truck, and I'm kind of look, you know, looking around like I'm casing the place or scoping the place, it gets kind of scary. So we've only had the sheriff's department call us twice to find out if we were in a particular area but by and large folks here have been really really nice to us yeah and i realize the damage you have to have those are film shopping <laughs> yes <laughs> being the no. oh, yeah. yes yes we did notice that <laughs> i mean i said what that looks like pellet marks to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I do have to compliment the, the county, though, compared to where we just left in, in Texas. All of the, the the people are just as curious, but they're not as vicious about it when they ask you, and they're all pretty receptive when you tell them what they're doing, too. In Texas, not so much, but out here, they at least walk up to you, hey, how you doing? So If I were dealing with the crap they're dealing with in Texas, well, you wouldn't get very far from Well, Texas is only a one-star state. Yeah, that's right. Five stars. <laughs> As far as the review, yeah, <laughs> you know, vacation there very often, do you? <laughs> no, I, I just know when I do go there, I never go to Plano, never go through Plano County. Never. Yeah. Ever. How many tickets did you get? I, none, because I've never gone there. No. <laughs> uh, and so we're, 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 we're willing to come back and do, you know, the subsequent presentations in person. The big issue will be you guys will probably have to help us find a place to stay because I've noticed there's some limitations to that here. And had I not driven my motor home up, I probably wouldn't be here now. Yeah. You know, because not we'll find you some places. Good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Right. We'll take care of it. All right. Well, thank you. Very Thanks. Much. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I've enjoyed you very it very much. Very much. Hopefully, good job. Good. Very, very good. good. Very good. Thank you. Ma'am, pleasure meeting you. All right, we're going to carry this stuff up to the truck, yeah. and then we're, we've got a little bit more work to do. By the way, I got to tell you, we were, had the windows rolled down in most county, and I'd go, somebody's got some drone.